In this lecture, we're going to explore the long run for monopolistically competitive markets. In the long run, we know that everything can change. And because there's freedom of entry and exit into and out of monopolistically competitive markets, uh, then if firms are making economic profits in the short run, similarly to in perfectly competitive markets, new firms are going to have an incentive to enter the industry. Now, the, the effect on the industry is going to be slightly different in the way we analyze it than the effect on a perfectly competitive industry when new firms enter because they're drawn by profits. So what happens in monopolistic competition is now that there are more producers in the industry, um, there are an increased number of products offered to consumers. So consumers now have more choices. Okay, so for example, let's use the example that's shown <coughs> on the slide here. These are some different um, video rental companies. So let's say that Netflix was making economic profits. So Walmart decided to enter the industry and begin to do DVD rentals online. Now consumers have more choices, whereas before they only had a few choices. Now Walmart is also offering online DVD rentals. So consumers can also go to Walmart to get their DVD rentals online. Now, the effect on the existing firms in the market is that the demand is going to decrease, shift to the left, um, and become more elastic because consumers now have um, additional choices. So the marginal revenue curve is also going to shift to the left for those existing firms um, because marginal revenue is derived from demand um, and is connected to demand. They're going to shift together. So the demand curve and marginal revenue curve for each fan for each firm that's existing in the market is going to, like we said, shift to the left and become more elastic, which will cause the profit maximizing quantity of output to decrease for all the existing firms. And this is going to continue until the firms are breaking even. So again, let's review. If firms are making profits, new firms are going to enter the market because there's freedom of entry into the industry. But instead of just saying like in perfect competition saying, okay, so now the price is driven down and Mr. Darp moves lower for the firm. Okay, it's a little more complex than that. The existing firms are going to have decreased demand because consumers have more choices and that demand is going to shift to the left and become more elastic, causing the profit maximizing quantity to decrease for the existing firms until the firms break even. So this is what's going to happen to the demand and marginal revenue curves as additional firms enter the industry. Now on the other hand, if firms are incurring losses over time, the least efficient firms are going to exit the industry. So again, they're going to wait until they can get out of their fixed cost commitments um, and then they're going to exit and stop producing. And this is just going to have the opposite effect on the market. So this is going to decrease the number of products offered to consumers. So let's say Netflix went out of business. Well, that's going to cause consumers to have less choices than before and this is going to increase the demand faced by the firms that um, are able to survive and stay in the market so Walmart DVD rentals and the other options that were shown on the previous slide are going to all have increased demand for their individual um, their individual firms so the demand curve and marginal revenue curve which is again connected and shifts with the demand curve um, is going to shift to the right for all those firms that survive and stay in the industry and also those that demand curve is going to become more inelastic because now consumers have less choices than before since some of the firms dropped out. This is going to cause the profit maximizing quantity of output to increase for each firm and this will continue until the firms are breaking even. So because of freedom of entry and exit into and out of the market, firms are not going to be able to earn economic profits in the long run. They're going to break even, which is totally fine. It's a normal rate of return. Their explicit and implicit costs are covered. Um, but the market will, in essence, self-adjust, and firms will enter and exit until everybody is earning a normal rate of return. Zero economic profits. So again, when firms are losing money and the least efficient firms exit, the firms that can stick it out and stay in the industry are going to experience this shift in their demand and marginal revenue curves. They're going to go to the right and become more inelastic. Okay, so this, this shifting back and forth <coughs> is going to happen 
until this long run equilibrium position is achieved, where the firms are breaking even at their profit maximizing level of output. So in essence, the demand and marginal revenue curves are going to shift left and right as firms exit and enter the industry until each producer looks like this. So some things to note here are, as you're draw if you ever have to draw this, is that average total cost is tangent to the demand curve where average total cost is declining. So it's in the downward sloping portion of average total cost. It's tangent to the demand curve. I'll point it out right here. Um, it's not the lowest part of average total cost yet because that's over here where marginal cost intersects it. But it's just tangent to the demand curve um, at this point, which means that the firms are breaking even because average total cost equals price or average revenue. So there are two characteristics of monopolistic competition in the long run at their profit maximizing level of output in essence of um, efficiency. First of all, price is greater than marginal cost and price is equal to average total cost. So since price is greater than marginal cost, we know that the firm is not allocatively efficient because there's a markup of price over marginal cost which is going to cause deadweight loss to exist. And remember whenever there's deadweight loss, then the market equilibrium quantity is not being achieved. You know, we're not producing as much as people would like and would desire to be produced in the market. And that's because firms are going to produce at their profit maximizing level of output, not where, you know, the market equilibrium happens to be. And since marginal cost does not equal average total cost, the firms are not productively efficient because we know marginal cost intersects average total cost at average total cost base and this is not um, where the monopolistically competitive firm will be in the long run. So monopolistically competitive firms are more efficient than monopolies but less efficient than perfect competitors. Perfect competition is like our our, our standard. We can put perfect competition up on a pedestal of efficiency and monopolies at the other end of the spectrum. Monopolistic competition is somewhere in between. But consumers often value product diversity over efficiency. If every industry in our world was perfectly competitive, we would have no choices because all products would be identical. So consumers often value um, the option to have choice, even if we have to pay a little bit more for those choices. So it's kind of personal preference. Um, comparing long run equilibrium in perf perfect competition and monopolistic competition here, we can see that this is what it looks like for a perfectly competitive firm to be at their long-run equilibrium, breaking even, perfectly productively efficient because they're at the base of average total cost here, and perfectly productively efficient because they're where um, supply or marginal cost equals demand. But over here for monopolistic competition, at the long-run equilibrium, um, they are not producing at their lowest average total cost, which would be here where marginal cost intersects it, so they're not productively efficient and they're also not producing where marginal cost equals demand so they're not allocatively efficient either because they're going to be producing at the profit maximizing point where MR equals MC over here. And that is the end. So the, the big takeaways today are understanding that market fluctuation that's going to occur as firms are losing money or earning profits, how additional people will enter or exit um, depending on the situation in the market and then how the, the entry or exit of firms into and out of the industry is going to affect the individual firms that are existing and staying in the market after the entry or exit occurs and um, then what that long run equilibrium is going to look like and how efficient it is or isn't compared to monopoly and perfect competition. Alright, that's it. It's a wrap.